Oi, fellow comrades, this is Squid Tard here, back with another episode of the Squid Tard Podcast, and another college football team schedule preview. We made it over 50 now, and now we're at episode 53, and today we're doing none other than the Penn State, I did the Lions, yeah, that one. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you guys are watching this, uh, go back and tune into my TCU one if you guys want to figure out what the last few remaining Squid Tard uh, or not Squid Tar podcast episodes, but schedule previews. I made a mistake when doing this by combining the Squid Tar podcast factor with the schedule previews, and I'm only going to do up to episode 60, so if you want to figure out which teams those are going to be, tune into the TCU one and you'll figure that out uh, there. Anyway, though, we're going to go ahead and carry right into Penn State because I want to go ahead and get into this team right away. I recently covered Ohio State, and you'll see why I mentioned that in a minute. Anyway, we'll look at Penn State here. Of course, uh, their 2019 season, they like usual, they did win over 10 games and finished out the season 11-2 and with a win over Memphis in a New Year's Six Bowl. So Penn State had a pretty darn good season. Uh, so now heading into 2020, they do have some talent leaving. Um, uh, of course, some receivers are leaving. They're getting their quarterback, Sean Clifford, back. He'll be returning for his next season, and it's going to be a good one, hopefully, for him. They've got some definite talent. Uh, hopefully, um, their wide receiver core is going to be set. And, you know, James Franklin has done a really good job with recruiting, I think, uh, to where even when they're losing big talent from the NFL, they've still got a lot of talent coming in. So they, they've got a lot of... Uh, They've got a lot of talent coming in, and not many questions still need to be answered. They've got quite a... They're, the only big question I think that needs to be answered for Penn State going into the 2020 season is, of course, just like Michigan, when are they going to beat Ohio State? Because Ohio State, uh, of course, Ohio State and Penn State have kind of been fighting for that divisional spot for these last few years, and it's kind of just been between them for that position uh, Michigan's been there too, but, you know, but as for Penn State, they, they've been around and they've been fighting Ohio State for that spot and they haven't been able to get over the hump and beat them as of recently. Looking at the 2020 schedule though, will things set up for them to beat Ohio State? I don't know. Let's find out. So the first game of the season is a home opener, an easy one against Kent State before they go on the road to play a, a non-con opponent in Virginia Tech. That one is going to be a fun one to watch, but I will. Th I do think Penn State should win that game. After that, you got San Jose State and then Northwestern, both of those games at home. Um, so Northwestern's your first conference opponent for the season before you go to play at Michigan. And that one could be a very tough one, so I would watch out for Michigan, especially since it's right before your bye week. Do not sleep on Michigan, because uh, you never know if they could just give you a loss before, of course, after your bye week, heading to play Iowa and Ohio State both at home. Both of those games are very crucial for Penn State, but I feel like I feel like Penn State is going to be completely and entirely locked on that Ohio State game, which could be bad, uh, considering if you if you look towards them and kind of just sleep on either Michigan or or Iowa. I mean, but uh, I was about to say Oklahoma. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but. Uh, <laughs> Either way, after Ohio State, you go to play on the road against Indiana and on the road against Nebraska before playing against Michigan State and Maryland at home and then finalizing the season with a pretty easy road game, I'd say, against Rutgers. So that's your season for 2020. It's what I'd say is a pretty hard schedule considering you're in the Big Ten and, of course, having to play some of these really tough teams. I think your bye week is set up in a pretty good spot, though, before you do have to play some really, really tough games, including Iowa and Ohio State. Favorably, I think Penn State would rather have their bye week set right before Ohio State, but Iowa's no sleeper either, so I, I think that's a pretty good spot to where it's set up. Uh, Michigan, uh, I think that game is going to be a tough one uh, for Penn State, 
And to be honest, I honestly think that it's going to be very hard for Penn State to go undefeated going into the regular season. And best case scenario, I think, for Penn State, and now when I do these best case scenario things, I pointed this out in the TCU one too, but best case scenario, this is realistic best case scenario. Truthfully, every best case scenario for every team would be 12-0, but let's just be real here. Um, Most teams right now probably aren't going to go 12-0 and 0, or nearly there. There's some teams that might go 0-12. Looking at you, Akron. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, I think best case scenario for Penn State would be maybe 11, maybe 11-1 and 1, or maybe 12-0. and 0. I would say I would say 12 and 0, but you're looking at a very very hard schedule here, and I'm not sure I'm confident enough in Penn State to be able to win out all of their games, especially having some of these really really tough games. It's even hard for Ohio State to do that, as they've been very very close to dropping a game or two, uh, like last year, and then the and, and then two years before, uh, they ended up losing to teams like Iowa, and then lost to Purdue a year after. So. It's very hard even for a team like Ohio State to go undefeated in the Big Ten. So I wouldn't wouldn't exactly count on Penn State to go undefeated in the regular season. Worst case scenario, 8-4, 7-5. Because other than Ohio State, Michigan, and Iowa, it would be hard for me to point out uh, really big losses for Penn State. The rest of your schedule is not that difficult. I think Indiana could give you some trouble, and I do think the same about teams like Michigan State and Nebraska, but they're they're not, let's just be real here, they're not, I don't think they're on the same level as Penn State, and so you should be favored by far to win that. Now, the reason I say 8-4 and four is if because you were able to lose to Michigan, Iowa, and Ohio State, you could drop one to a team you're not supposed to. We've seen an example like this in the Big Ten before, with, of course, last year, Wisconsin, a heavily favored Wisconsin at that, going to lose to I or not, I mean, uh, Illinois. So, anything can happen for uh, Penn State, but mo- most realistically, I think the worst case scenario would be around 7-5 and five or 8-4. and four. Um, my guess would be possibly the best case scenario point out, which is 11 and one. Um, uh, I think you've definitely got some winnable games here. And I think the only one you w- won't be favored in, unless if the wheels fall off for you will be Ohio state. So of course you're going to have that game marked in red. I believe you just want to be careful to not drop a game against Michigan or Iowa. Cause if they trip you up, Who knows what will happen. Anyway, I think that's pretty much the Penn State preview summed up. Uh, If you guys like the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I will have predictions for all these teams in the summertime when we get there. But as for now, I'm just doing the rest of these previews. And then I'm going to start working on the predictions and get those out during the summer. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, power to Tart Area.